Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. This is the XPS 15 2-in-1. It's not designed to replace the original XPS 15. They're still making those. It's more of like a supplementary device for people that want something that's a little more versatile that can do like different modes and stuff like this. So it's a thin and light two-in-one device that's using the new KB Lake G processors. So those have the AMD GPUs with the Intel CPUs. It's a very powerful system in a small package. So when you use this thing in tablet mode, it's not exactly the most comfortable thing if you're gonna handhold it. If you have it just placed down for taking notes or just doing things as a like rested tablet, perfect. But if you're gonna hold this thing, it's a little big, it's comfortable, it's usable, but it is big. It's just a 15 inch screen is never great for a handheld tablet device. But you can use it in tent mode or presentation mode. You can pop it up to watch a movie. You can play games. You can connect up a controller or a mouse and a keyboard. It's a really nice experience to be up and close to your screen doing stuff. Now, the speakers are located in the back here. It's not the best location. The speakers sound okay. I mean, if there's a difference between the regular XPS 15 speakers and these, it's not a substantial difference. They sound okay, but the location isn't great. And especially if you have it in tablet mode or something, it does muffle the sound. The ports on this device are all USB-C. So there's four of them, there's two on each side, and there's four lane PCIe support if you're curious about external GPUs. There's no USB-A and there's only a micro SD slot, which is a little weird to me because I feel like this is a device that's really great for creatives and those are the type of people that would use an SD slot, but yeah, you're stuck with micro SD. The charging is USB-C and we also have a battery indicator, which we see on XPS products. I like seeing that. Okay, the display, this is on the 4K panel, because that's the one that I have here, is an excellent display. It's very bright, very color accurate. You're gonna like it. The original XPS 15 screen was already good, so I expected good. It's even better than I thought it would be. It's not as bright as a MacBook Pro screen, but I mean, I prefer the screen over the MacBook Pros. It's just more color accurate. It's just a nicer looking image to me. There's also a dedicated pen for the two-in-one device. Low latency, really useful for creatives and students. The nib feels good to me. It reminds me of a Surface product. It's got a little bit of texture to it when you're writing on the glass. The webcam, still located on the bottom, it's got that standard like up nose angle from the SPS products, but because it's a two-in-one, you can flip it into tent mode and now you have a normal looking image. You also have Windows Hello for facial recognition and there's also a fingerprint sensor at the top of the keyboard. So this keyboard is a maglev keyboard. It uses magnets to raise each key. So instead of a spring or a switch, it uses magnets to basically give each key resistance. And it's actually one of its more interesting features. The purpose of this tech is to reduce the thickness of this laptop. So you don't have a switch, you don't have a dome, you basically shave a couple millimeters off of the base. Now, how does it feel? Honestly, when you first use it, it's gonna be a little bit different, but you get used to it quickly. It feels not like a butterfly switch from the Apple keyboards, but it just, it feels different. The way that a butterfly switch felt different from a regular chiclet keyboard. This also feels different in its own kind of way. It's really hard to describe this, but you'll get used to it. That's the only thing that really matters. You get used to this thing very quickly. After like 24 hours, 48 hours of using it, I'm very comfortable on it. The keys feel like they snap back to the resting state a little faster than normal, but yeah, I feel like most people will like it. The trackpad is great. It's your standard XPS trackpad, glass surface with great tracking and good button mechanics. Now there is a glitch that I noticed and I think it's a software thing. If you have three keys pressed down at the same time, like they have to be together at the same time, which probably won't happen very often, but if you do, you sometimes get other keys registering that you didn't even press at all. It's infrequent and the reality is you're probably not spamming three keys at once together very often, but it is a thing right now. Hopefully they patch it soon. Now, if you wanna get inside here, it's really easy, kind of like any of the XPS products, a bunch of screws on the bottom, pops right off, and inside you have a removable drive, which is great. Uh, the RAM is soldered on though, don't love that. And they've also gone with the killer Wi-Fi card again, which I also don't love. The battery life is not what I expected. It's actually a pretty big battery, 75 watt hours, but the battery life was short. And I'm not sure if this is a software thing or a driver thing or something that can be improved over time, but right now I'm getting around five hours of battery life at 250 nits on a 75 watt hour battery, which is a little weird to me, right? I feel like on a device like this, I would have expected like seven, maybe eight pretty comfortably. I'm getting five. It's a solid performer. It's running the i7-8705G, so the GPU pushes out really similar performance to a GTX 1050. Maybe a little bit faster on some titles, but most modern games can run near 60 frames per second if you lower the graphics quality a bit. It's good, not mind-blowing though, but keep in mind it's a thin and light two-in-one laptop. Same with the thermals, they're fair. If you're expecting some crazy performance, you're gonna be disappointed. In benchmarks, I'm not seeing any issues, but if you play heavier games for long enough, it can throttle. 
They're using GORE material like the XPS 13 to help channel the heat away from the keyboard and away from the bottom panel, so it's comfortable to use, but if you wanted to pick up a machine for heavy gaming, this is probably not the right one. The video editing performance is also good. It's not as good as like the new 6-core Coffee Lake CPUs, but it's pretty solid. Render time's a little bit slower than a 6-core, but the actual video editing experience is very similar. It's a good device for that. The fans come on more often than I'd like. They're quiet under load, but when you stress the system hard, it does get loud. Okay, I feel like Dell put a lot of effort and time into making this thing. This isn't some kind of like half-ass or half-baked attempt that we see from other companies when it comes to two-in-one devices. This is legit, this is well-engineered, it's well thought out. I don't love the battery life, I hope it improves, I feel like it will improve, but aside from that, this is a kick-ass device. Bear in mind though, this is not for everyone. If you're looking for like a traditional clamshell laptop, the XPS 15, like the OG one, is gonna be a better option than this. But if you're creative, if you're a student, if you're someone that wants the portability of something that's really diverse and can do a lot of different things and you travel frequently and you watch a lot of like media and watch a lot of movies while you're traveling, this is really cool. It's, it's better for a lot of things that the XPS 15 can't do, but if you're just looking for a clamshell device that just does your basic stuff, XPS 15 OG version is a better choice. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.